All right. All right, here we go. We're live on the radio in three minutes. Folks, noon report. Break it down for you on this uh, beautiful Wednesday. My goodness, weather is just spectacular. Hola, one and all. Folks, there I am behind this. Farrah Paul is here. Hi, Farrah Paul. Oh, there's Juan with a little echo. There's Anthony. Thank you. Juanito, there's Lynn Miller. And, of course, checking in, member of Team One. Hola, Brenda. Folks, share that you are watching. Yes, we are live in two minutes. Two minutes. There's Nancy McCormick. You know, there was something I, well, you know, we just never know. We never know. There's Martha Stamp. Hi there, Kathy. Well, now the race is to try to get Gary Leonard elected, without question. But this is a little bit of a steep climb. Thank you. RF checks in. Says all is good. I did, uh, well, there's news with the state police I'm going to tell you about in just a moment. Um, uh, let's see. Yes, yes, yes. All right, we'll get that straightened out. Folks, we're live in one minute. One minute to air time. Again, on this, uh, my goodness, what a beautiful Wednesday. I did, you know, I, I received an email from a parent that is upset with where the child goes to school and they're telling them for the rest of the week to wear t shirt and shorts and bring a bottle of water. And, that this parent was saying they should cancel school. Listen, it, it, it it's not permanent, okay? It's just today and tomorrow are going to be warm, and then Friday starts to settle down, and then next week we go to the less than glamorous forecast. So, like, let's not, no, don't you don't cancel school. What is this? Canceling the airport where, I mean, closing the airport. All right, we're going. Folks, good afternoon at 12.06. On this beautiful Wednesday, my goodness, what a first week of weather. September, you're listening to the John DePietro Show. Now, it's AM 1380 and 99.9 FM. You can always listen online at our website, DePietro.com, where we have the lead story. The Lizard Boy has returned. The Lizard Student has returned to CCRI. You can see the video. We have some new photos. In this age of, you know, you tell the person your preferred pronouns. I covered it. The rest of the media feels, no, nope, that's his right. I, I find it, you know, I'm already hearing from different students at CCRI and or parents that feel it's a little ludicrous that the college allows someone to attend in the lizard outfit. You can see the uh, photos again, head to toe, back again. Um, I did interview that individual last fall. I, I don't feel the urge to Go back. We are covering the story. Folks, this portion <coughs> of the John DePietro Show is brought to you by PR Landscape Materials and Garden Center, 3688 Quaker Lane, North Kingstown, right now. Boy, what a day to stop by there. Steve, Debbie, Jr., Byron, full mums, 4-inch, 12-inch pots, mum hangers, which look fantastic. They have kale, ornamental peppers. They're open seven days a week. Uh, native vegetables. They also have a uh, great selection. Straw, fall decorations. More and more every year, people kind of decorate. Now, it's still summertime, um, but it, uh, but they are just built for fall and stop it and see them. It's Steve and Debbie and Junior and Byron, folks. PR Landscape Materials and Garden Center, 3688 Quaker Lane in North Kingstown. And especially, I received a nice note from... Uh, Ernie, who said he loved their native vegetables. He picked up some corn, 
Um, I think he said some cucumbers and peppers, but tomatoes, zucchini, yellow squash. Folks, PR, landscape materials, and garden center. It's a happening. Well, folks, good afternoon. You're listening to the John DePietro Show. Now, check out DePietro.com. We have some unique original stories. I also want to point out to people that if you uh, log on at DePietro.com, which is right by the Coesed Inn, 226 Coesed Avenue, West Warwick, lunched in a drinks lounge, but wait, there's more. Now they also have the market at Coesed, the Coesed Inn. Uh, they do such a great job over there. But if you check out DePietro.com, and I, I want to walk you through it, whenever you get a moment, People are on their phone. I'm on DePetro.com as we speak. And you see Listen Live at the top. And then you have all of our links to social media. You have, there's our link for Facebook. There's the link to Twitter or X, whatever people are calling it. Instagram, YouTube, which is really picking up. And then we also have our link to TikTok. But if, you, if you're on DePetro.com and you go under radio show, all of the shows, three hours a day, are all listed right there. So if you miss a segment, you can go back and listen to it. Um, someone was just sending me a message. Have I done anything about the uh, right to uh, shoreline access? We, we've done the answer. We've done several segments on that with attorney Tim Dodd and going walking through the, the legal aspect of that. But go to radio show. Uh, there's info on me. Again, if you want to contact me, we have the shop. And then we have stories such as the lizard student returns to CCRI. There he is standing there in his full glory. And then the airport. No one else has that story. We have uh, everything in West Warwick. That guy's a total lunatic. They were spreading the needles. Uh, video with, you know, the airport chaos. We were in Smithfield twice last week for the attempted bank robbery, the East Providence story, and the ACI stuff. It's all right there. It's all at the website, topetro.com. Now, in regards to also, I just posted, let me just pull it up. So last night, um, we had a false alarm. It happens, you know, it happens. And uh, meaning, what's a false alarm? Well, when I'm with police, many times they get called, they go, and there's nothing there. And and, and it, it happens, right? And many times what we try to do is limit the number of times. Um, sometimes I, I go to something. And we're prepared to go live, but then either the scene clears or whatever. But last night, I did receive a message from someone saying something seems to be going on. Now, what's tough is, <clears throat> admittedly, um, when, you've, when you go to a false alarm, you're then less intent of then going when there's something is going on. But there was something really going on last night. And I just posted it on um, the Facebook page. Big state police arrest fugitive from Georgia that fled from a motor vehicle stop. So, so this was at almost midnight last night. Members of the state police, Cranston police, arrested Michael Odom of Georgia. So it was a motor vehicle stop on Reservoir Avenue in Cranston. Subsequent FERC pursuit. He fled the vehicle, was tracked by canines to the area behind 301 Reservoir Avenue. State police drone with the infrared camera. They located him hiding in the water of the Mash Park Pond. Troopers and members of the Cranston Police Department were directed towards him along the shoreline by the operator. They located him as he exited the pond on his own, taken into custody without further, further incident. So that was a fugitive from Georgia that they found. Folks, another example, by the way, also, Johnston Police put out, and I shared this, community notification level three sex offender in Johnston. And there's his photo, um, as we are kin to do. So great job last night. Now, again, it's a little late, not beyond the bounce. I mean, maybe... Um, Willing to, uh, you know, go to something like that. It's, it's too bad it didn't happen a little bit earlier. It sounds like they were trying to locate that individual. But I did. Um, it was Dennis that contacted me. And, um, said, yeah, police, Reservoir Avenue, Cranston, State Police, something going on. But, you know, we, we never know. We never know what could lead to something. So then in the aftermath, then I'm like, ah, I should. But, we, you know, you don't know at the time. Right? Like they don't send out a bullet and they were chasing a fugitive. Now, the reason why I have, and by the way, 
for those that are not interested in the Lizard Boy story or whatever, Lizard Student story, just scroll past. You know, I'm, I, um, these people that always feel they have to, you know, I'm not interested, who cares? Then just keep going. If, if you're not interested and you don't care, then, then just like scroll past, move along. Like, do you do do people sit there and watch the evening news and say, I don't care about this channel? To, like, just all right. Maybe you don't find it interesting. It's like this with every story where there are people that say, you know, I'm not into like whatever it is. So just I don't know why people feel the compulsive nature to announce to everyone they have no interest in a story. Fine. Then. You don't have to then scroll past whatever, right? When I'm like looking for different stories and looking and reading the news, I, I this pl the majority of the stories I see, I'm not interested in. Now, the big CD1 race, I want to start off with that during this noon report that took place yesterday. <clears throat> um, I, I'm anxious to see how the Republican Gary Leonard, who won, now we'll face this newcomer, Gabe Ammo. Now, if you want to be objective, uh, Gabe Ammo, who does have an interesting story, seems like a very reasonable guy. He's very impressive. Uh, he's young. He would be the first person of color to be elected uh, to Washington from Rhode Island. I think that's going to kind of carry the day for a lot of people, especially for the Democrat Party. It's a tough district, but he has an impressive story. He's uh, from Pawtucket, went to Moses Brown, uh, has a very impressive background, worked in the Obama White House, worked for Governor Raimondo, and then was working at the White House for President Biden, left that to then come and run for office. I think it's, um, I'm interested to see how this race is going to pan out, but let's talk about what really happened last night. Like, it's laughable to me that Governor McKee was saying that the voters got it right. And what he's read, that is another shot. He selected Lieutenant Governor Sabina Matos, who finished fourth. <clears throat> I, I, I don't understand all of these individuals that find the Lieutenant Governor so impressive. As I've said, I watched her on the debate stage. There's nothing special there. There's nothing special. She, she, she's a total parrot. She reads from her notes. She was kind of created. Because Governor McKee picked her, but now she's just the damaged lieutenant governor who finished fourth, by the way. Now, granted, you know, the signature scandal is still going on, the investigation. I think there will be charges from that. There were people that were forging the names of dead individuals. There were also identity theft, signing the names of different people. It was her campaign. I, I can't find one thing during the campaign that she did right. I think Lieutenant Governor Matos, I, I think I just think she's a lightweight. But what does it say about Governor McKee? What do you mean the voters got it right? He he wouldn't even endorse his own hand picked selected person to be the you know, from that he picked for Lieutenant Governor. And then she runs a, a terrible campaign. I, I I mean it, I can't find anything she did right. She even had that ridiculous press briefing where she she was telling people to get out of the race. She was acting like it was against her, against that Aaron Ruggenberg, who finished second. So the order was Gabe Ammo. By the way, this he blew out Aaron Ruggenberg. Gabe Ammo, uh, we'll see what happens in the general, but to be a complete unknown and come into a crowded primary and pull that off, that, you know, that's, that's impressive. That is not easy to do. Now, uh, there's also, as we will go into, and Justin Katz put it out, the Republican Party of Rhode Island should be questioning how the mail ballots came out last night. So Justin Katz, who I enjoy doing the segment with each week on the radio, which is politics this week, he pointed out something that the media seems to be ignoring for whatever reason. But he, he pointed out that this is his tweet. Somebody should look into what made Anna Quazada, now she's a Providence state senator, so great at mail ballots. Think of this. She came in seventh in the primary, but she came in third in mail ballots. 
which provided 57% of her votes. She was 10th on election day and 12th in early voting. But the mail ballots, again, folks, I'll just say this about the mail ballots. Unless the Rhode Island Republican Party chooses to do something, um, it, 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 this is, what's the definition of insanity? The definition of insanity is you keep doing the same thing over and you're expecting different results. I also want to point out, I'm glad, Ted Nisi, WPRI, Channel 12, political editor, Dan McGowan, um, who you'll hear next hour of the Boston Globe, tweet, Senator Whitehouse confirms he voted for Gabe Hippo yesterday, and Ted Nisi said, so brave endorsing his old staffer the day after the primary. You know, that is a very good point, is Senator Whitehouse you know, the day after he wins, I voted for him. I mean, they're, they're so weak. Gary Leonard, I will have him on. He's the Republican. Stephen Casey really got shellacked. I mean, he just did. I didn't, I don't know. I didn't fully see it. Um, He, he didn't run the worst campaign, but I, I was always just thinking about Stephen Casey, the rep from Woodsocket, was... I don't know, unless I'm like, and I was saying, unless I'm missing something, it just doesn't seem to be the most impressive campaign. But the big news is Ruggenberg lost. The big news, folks, and this is, you know, you gotta, we gotta look for the positive. Those on Facebook know we're, we're always looking for the positive. The positive is Rhode Island's not as progressive as Aaron Ruggenberg thought. This is a guy who I, I am glad that he lost. He is arrogant, he is entitled. Um, he, he's not a nice individual. He was so proud of his Bernie Sanders endorsement, his AOC. In some ways, it is kind of refreshing that it turns out that the state is not as progressive as Aaron Ruggenberg thought. He did great on the Providence East, uh, east side of Providence, but something that is somewhat problematic for Gary Leonard. 58-year-old retired U.S. Marine officer. To me, he needs better talking points. Um, he's using a lot of slogans, you know, people over politics, blah, blah, blah. Like, listen, it's really simple. The Republicans are running Congress. If we want to have representation in Washington, we, we need someone in that party. Rhode Island has always been best served when we've had someone a Republican. You know, it's also interesting when you um, look back, there was a time that, as Donna Perry pointed out, that the majority of people, um, that uh, Claiborne Pell was the only uh, Democrat, right? You had Senator John Chafee, and then you had Claudine Schneider, um, and then you had Ron Makeley. I mean, there there was a time. Think of that. Three of the four seats in Washington were Republican. We've come a long way <clears throat> from from that. But but Gary Leonard, to me, I don't know. It's a big lift. It's a big ask. It's possible. We'll follow the race. But Ruggenberg, he said he's all done with politics. This was the Tierra Mac. Folks, it is, you know, yeah, I, I did. I thought he was going to take it simply because of the amount... It is, it's significant that the suburban voters broke off and did not go with the progressives with, with Ruggenberg. They did not. And, and so now it lines up Gabe Ammo against um, Gary Leonard. So we'll be in touch. I'll definitely have Gary Leonard on. He's, to me, he's talking a little bit in slogans right now. Um, I, I'm not... I don't know. I'm not a big fan of that type of stuff. Um, I, I don't think it resonates. <clears throat> I um, I mean, I think Gabe Ammo, the way you, you have to go after him is, I mean, he, he was working in the Biden White House. Biden is not popular right now. He, um, he, he but he, it, it's not going to be an easy race. And, and I just feel Gary Leonard is not getting any help from the Republicans at the Rhode Island State House because they just seemingly, um, as I've been very outspoken in saying, they're just not doing anything about this mail ballot thing. I'm glad that Justin Katz pointed that out, that 
my God, it's, um, it's, it's ridiculous that, that, you know, that you have like this Anna Quisada. How is it that she comes in third in mail ballots, right? Like there's no way that that's legit. So, but let's also talk about Sabina Matos. I mean, I think her political future is over. Someone will definitely challenge her for lieutenant governor. She's, she's not good at raising money. She's arrogant. She, those press briefings were, were terrible. You know, she had that obnoxious guy come in from New York, the congressman. I was at the press briefing she had on the Friday night about the signature. She started crying like she was a victim. Then she holds the press conference with that Nick, Nick Oriello, who is delusional that everyone should get out and support her when she finished fourth. A sitting lieutenant governor, McKee's handpicked person, finishes fourth. You watch how her life is going to change. I've heard. McKee is no longer inviting her along. She's a, she's a damaged lieutenant governor. She's there for three more years. She will run for re-election. I mean, she is, she'll read whatever they put in front of her. But she's a very damaged lieutenant governor. I don't think she'd get passed. Now, we'll see what happens with the signature scandal, which I think will result in criminal charges. I do believe that. Um, Attorney General Peter Narona, he's not gonna fight, he's not gonna protect her. He's not gonna protect her. It was he lives in Jamestown. It was the Jamestown Board of Canvassers that figured out that, that she was such a fraud. So I think that he's he's not gonna defend her in, in any way. Um so for Governor McKee. You know, now you have an unpopular governor. Um, his handpicked person runs for Congress and finishes fourth. I'm sure McKee is just thrilled that Ruggenberg lost, is what he's thrilled about. But I don't know. If if Gary Leonard, the Republican, there's always a path. And there's always a path. It all depends on the type of campaign that he's going to run. So now I want to talk about, uh, I did get an update about the West Warwick situation, and then uh, I also want to touch on um, this Officer Dolan situation, which is uh, incredible right now. But but that is no, that gave ammo. He is not going to be, um, you know, they're all really going to rally around him. They're all really going to rally around him. He is the type of candidate, they all feel good about themselves that he won. So, and, and again, when you listen to him, he was very good during the debates. He is very smart. He, regardless of his politics, the guy's got an impressive resume. I mean, he went to Moses Brown. He's from Pawtucket. There was the, the father last night, all excited. Um, he, he comes from, he, you want to talk about a self-made guy. He, uh, you know, he, he's, that's, that's not an easy one. He, this is, that is someone to watch. That is someone to watch in the movie. He think of the experience you get from working in the Obama White House. Think of the experience he learned a lot from Raimondo. And then he, regardless again of what you think of the politics, he was working in the Biden White House. That is, and there's no better place in the world to work than at the White House. As someone that has visited there, the people that work there, the the most desirable jobs are the people that actually get to work every day at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Now, folks, this portion of the program, we have a new sponsor I want to welcome. And this is one of those things. It's not going to appeal to everyone, but I've seen some of the interviews that Michael has done. And this is something that people are going to learn more about. The name of the company, they're located right on Oakland Avenue in Cranston, is Scalp Masters Micropigmentation. Now they have a Facebook page. You can call for a free consultation, 401-867-1097. Again, I'm not expecting you to remember the phone number, but they do have a website, which I will be sharing. They have a Facebook page, and it's, it's a cosmetic procedure for men and women who are experiencing hair loss. And it's affordable. It makes a huge difference. Hair loss for men it frames them so it gives the appearance that you have a buzz cut which then frames you those people that are and there are guys that do it completely no hair they shave their head um it makes them look older <clears throat> so it's a free consultation and hair loss for women 
can be very, very difficult. I was at a store the other day and I was telling Michael this, um, where the clerk, I felt bad for the woman because she parts her hair in the middle and she's very visible hair loss in the middle. And so I didn't, I'm not going to say anything. It's a very personal thing, but it's a cosmetic procedure. At least call for the free consultation and go in and learn more about it. For those experiencing hair loss or thinning hair, it's Scalpmester's micropigmentation. They're located right on Oakland Avenue in Cranston. Contact Michael. He is an authority on this. It's a cosmetic procedure. And you can see I, the Facebook page. You can see the before and afters. It makes a huge difference. For men that are completely no hair, it, it gives them, it just looks like they have a buzz cut. And it frames their face. And, you know, it, it, it's a huge, makes a huge difference for those that, that feel very self-conscious of losing hair. And the same thing, by the way, especially for women, Scalp Masters Micro Pigmentation. Contact Michael. Free consultation. Hey, what is it called? You know, at least learn more. Maybe it's not for you. Maybe you want to look into it. 401 867 1097. Uh, Scalp Masters Micro Pigmentation. Again, I will be giving. You're going to learn more about them. Um, just kind of planting the seed for those that are thinking about it. Folks, this portion of the John DePietro Show is brought to you by Ryan's Appliance Repair. You know, I'm dealing with it right now. Um, when, when, right now, Ryan fixed our washing machine and suddenly, for whatever reason, it's not spinning through the final cycle. Let's go through the checklist. Did I try to fix it? I, I'm not talented that way. No, I could not. If I was taken hostage and Tara said, either you fix this washing machine or you're a goner, I, I, I don't have it. Um, did, is it time to buy a new one? I don't think so, right? But if you have an appliance in your home, my first inclination is I just call Ryan. He's going to come this afternoon. 401 710 7096. I can go through the checklist. He fixed our dryer. One time I put clothes in the dryer. It was too large. It, um, it needed a belt to be replaced. Boom, the dryer. He fixed it in like five minutes. So it was like showing off. Washing machine. Maybe are you having a problem with your dishwasher or your stove or your refrigerator or your microwave, garbage disposal. The thing about an appliance is, you know, I, I can't take the washing machine and like bring it somewhere to get it. He comes right to you, comes right to your home. Ryan's Appliance Repair. As I like to say, if your appliance is dying, just call Ryan. Ryan's Appliance Repair, 401-710-7096. Now, I just want to check. I'm going to follow up on this. Now, as many of you know, I, um, <clears throat> we, I was in West Warwick on Sunday. That guy that was in court that they arrested is a total nutcase. I posted one of his... He has these YouTube videos, William Ott. I, I, I can't believe they let this guy. I, I don't listen. And here's the thing. I don't know whether he should be committed or he should be locked up. He shouldn't be on the streets. But but I just received information that and I'll check it out, that Centerville Bank pulled their sign out of the ground at the Arctic Gazebo. They pulled their sponsorship of the property. The property would be roped off and closed. Now, I, I don't know. I'll find out about that. The, there could be something going on with that. Um, that's, it was a crime scene. If, if you haven't seen this guy that was in court, it, it, he, he just got out of the ACI a week ago. He's, he's, um, he's in his 50s, William Ott. He's giving different names. I wish I had made, I didn't know he was going to be arraigned or I had something else going on. He um, he told the judge in court yesterday, this guy, Ott, that he was born in 1936. He's just like all over the place. So, um, but anyhow, I, I, I'm not sure what to make of that. I've also learned, I didn't realize in West Warwick that they, the homeless people gather at that gazebo. That's... Like, why is that allowed? That's a public gazebo. It shouldn't be tolerated. I, I was unaware of that anywhere. They, they're ruining that. Who wants to go to 
any public property where then there are homeless people there. That is part of that progressive agenda. And folks, look what's going to be coming in September. Let's go over the calendar. Then it'll become October. Then it becomes November. Then it becomes December. It starts getting cold in November. And then suddenly, you know, we have a homeless problem again. It shouldn't happen that way. I also received this message, um, the new updated law regarding public beach access. You know, that's, I'll, I'll address that. That's, that's not the new law. Notice the way, and I don't know this person that sent it to me. It's, it's not just the way it's phrased. I am familiar with it. We've done several segments with our legal expert attorney, Tim Dodd. That is, it's not about public beach access. It's, it's shoreline access. So it, I, I don't know. I don't like to respond as I'm live here, but it's, it, look at the way that's framed. See, that was the guy in Middletown that it's, it's sure, I will do it. It's, it is shoreline access. It's not, not, what did he call it? Public, not public beach access. That, that is, that is false. See, these are the people, and I'm not going to dwell on this, but that they, they believe, and these are the progressives on the far left, they don't believe anyone should have private property. And, and we've kind of walked through it a little bit. Um, right now, the shoreline was you could walk along the Rhode Island shore. And by the way, the print media loves this story for whatever reason. But you can walk along the Rhode Island shore, and you should be able to walk all the way around, and you have access right along wherever the you know the water is. They've changed it now to 10 feet above that. As a result of that, 10 feet above that, as a result of that, I know this summer they had problems at the Dunes Club in Narragansett. They had problems at Bonnet Shores. You have people, when they bought their property, their property extended down to wherever the high tide mark was. The Rhode Island law, which is being challenged, has now made it 10 feet above that. So what you have, and I've talked about this, and I've actually even done some TikTok videos on this, is you have these people that <clears throat> it happened in North Kingstown. So there's a guy that lives right along the water. And it's really the way that sh the, the cove goes in. It, it curves. There's, there's very little small feature batch. So you have an, an, here's the example I like to give. Think of a football field. And, and you could go anywhere on the football field. <clears throat> but you know that there's a homeowner that lives right at the end zone. So these people, instead of going to the beach and being on the 50-yard line or the 40-yard line or the 30-yard line, they like to go right in the end zone in front of the guy's house. That's what it comes down to, even though they have the entire beach. So we're, we've talked about this with that. No, notice the way it's, they try to frame it as, oh, it's public beach, public access to the beach. That's, that's not what it is. Wrong. Try that with someone that doesn't pay attention to the news. No, this is shoreline access. And there was a TikTok video where this guy in Middletown is on this guy's property and he's swearing at him. No, no, no. I have the right. You don't own any more property. Right? That's the John Lennon thing. Imagine that's communism. No one has private property. Everything belongs to that's that's a communist belief. That's not what it is. I have the right to go through your yard to the beach because no one has private property. As we have discussed, can you imagine right now, wherever you're listening or watching the program, um, you have a sidewalk in front of your home. And then if Rhode Island said, okay, from now on, People, people can go five feet up from the sidewalk. So people start, you know, setting up chairs and sitting on your front lawn. You'd say, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Th this is my lawn. No, no, no. We have the right. There's no more private property. How about your backyard? Imagine you're in your backyard with either yourself or your children or grandchildren, whoever. And these individuals in Rhode Island says, oh, from now on, people can go five feet from the edge of your property. Like, whoa, what is this? I bought it. Here's the property line. Here's my property. Oh, no, that doesn't exist anymore. Well, it's the same thing. It is not public beach access. Our beaches do have a right of way. Rhode Island does have right of way to the shore. That does exist. 
there was a period of time I lived in Warwick Neck. Short period of time. But and we lived right next to the right of way, where people could go up and down to the beach. Um I have a really good friend who lives in Narragansett, and there's a right of way to the beach. That does exist. That's not what this is. See, look at they're trying to make it like there's no such thing. Now I'm not a, I'm not a member of Bailey's Beach Club, but those people, that's their beach club or Bonnet. Well, I have been over the years, many many years, a member of Bonnet. But I believe this law is going to be struck down. Look at the way they try to frame it. Oh no, it's it's public access to the beach. That's not what it is. It's it's shoreline access. So, and I'm going to touch on the Officer Dolan case as well. Folks, this portion of the John DePietro Show, again, I want to welcome another, wait a minute, another one? Yes, another one, new sponsor of the program. And I had been getting messages, is there a plumber that I could recommend? Because, listen, nothing throws off your life or your day or your business, whatever, when you need a plumber, especially to replace a water heater. Folks, I found the guy. JMB Plumbing. Now, I shared their Facebook page. You're going to learn more about them. Plumbing Repair and Service. Call today, 401 743 9153. The thing about a plumber is you go about and you never need to call one until then you really need to call them. JMB Plumbing. Repair damaged water pipes, repair clogged pipelines, replace water heaters. What's worse? Then suddenly your water heater kicks and you have a flooded basement. Any type of plumbing work, I found the guy. And you should see their reviews of people that they've worked with. They're local. It's a family-run business that I always like to support. It's J&B Plumbing. Now, you may not need one today. You may not need a plumber tomorrow. You may not need a plumber this month. But at some point, if you have a home, or a business, you're going to need a plumber. J&B Plumbing. Call them today, especially if your water heater kicks. 401-743-9153 for J&B Plumbing. Well, folks, good afternoon. You're listening to the John DePietro Show. It's AM 1380 and 99.9 FM. That Dolan story, um, Officer Dolan out of Pawtucket, this guy... You know, do I support the police? Yes, I do. Um, and sometimes locally, you can tell that uh, there's there's many members of the media that are against the police. And we really saw that the summer of 2020. But this guy, and I attended this trial, this guy should not be a police officer. Pawtucket police officer Daniel Dolan, he, he did get off. Now, I'll say this about Dolan. He took the stand in his own defense. He was very good on the stand. He had been in the military. He was very calm on the witness stand. He he had a great attorney as well. He had a great attorney. But he shot that team, Dominic, in West Greenwich. Um, I covered that. I was right there that night. And now this guy, who's still out, Pawtucket police want to fire him. Dolan gets stopped, Main Street in Coventry refuses to submit to a chemical test. On top of that, he was then, uh, and I want to get more of the info, but he was threatening some of the police and some public officials. Th this is someone, like th this guy, how, how many chances are, do you think you're going to get? Dolan of Pawtucket, th this is now you're a liability. Now you make all police look bad. Here's the thing also about um, and I've dealt quite a bit with Coventry police. Do you, do you think th that's how they wanted to spend their night? Do you think that Saturday night they were looking to, hey, let's, like, it's it, it's so egregious. This guy, it, it's it's so, like, selfish. It's so, um, like, how, how do you pull a stunt like that? They They go, do you think this is how they wanted to spend? And you know what else? That no one talks about, by the way, that I'm going to follow up with um, the Bristol Police Chief is the head of the Rhode Island Police Chiefs Association. Do you know that a DUI takes is is takes up a tremendous amount of time 
when police have to deal with someone at a DUI. So it takes the officers off the road. Many, time, if a, many times if a police officer, regardless where they are, Lincoln, Woodsocket, um, if they have to deal with uh, someone, a motorist on a DUI, that they're basically done for the night because it's so time consuming to go everything like that. I think there should be a way to remedy that where there should be, and I, I don't claim to know, and I'll, I'll find out from Chief Lynch, who we've had on, who's the head of the Police Chief Association. But to me, it would, it would make more sense <clears throat> if there was some kind of statewide unit that if you get a DUI officer, whether it be in Coventry or Cranston, whatever, boom, the unit is dispatched and then they handle it so the officer is not tied up all night. But the fact that he got pulled over in Coventry, and on top of that, he made threats towards, now you're threatening the police. Like, you, you can't be a bigger jerk. So, now right now, it, it, you know, this will play itself out. And I get the whole element of uh, presumed innocent and so forth. But it, it, if you're Dolan, like at this point, if you're Pawtucket, how 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 are they supposed to? This is someone who is abusing the police officer bill of rights, the Leobor. He he is pushing it to the limit. <clears throat> you want to talk about judgment? Like you're 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 on. This is another major red flag in this day and age. I mean, there's like many of you. There's there's zero those are decisions <clears throat> he made the decision to drink he made the decision to get behind the wheel then on top of that then he's threatening the coventry police it's like that that is just absolutely disgraceful behavior from someone who uh, you you would think you would again this officer dolan but you would think he he was so lucky he got off when he he shot the team which was totally, he could have killed the kid. He could have killed a lot of people that night. He, you want to talk about, like, it, he, it was <clears throat> incredible he beat the rap on that. And then your way <laughs> is then the guy get nailed. In, in this day and age, folks, how many times do we have to say there's, there's just, there's no excuse for someone to get behind the wheel Right, like we're we're dealing with enough of these people that uh, it's different. You have a medical emergency Saturday morning. It would seem a ninety-three-year-old man had a medical emergency, left the road and crashed into that farm right on the Johnson Smithfield line. Well, that that was, you know, he was in distress and there was a medical emergency. But all of these cars we see flipped over, and there's so many people that are dri obviously driving under the influence that they're getting high and whatever else we're calling it these days. <clears throat> but in this day and age of, you know you're not supposed to go behind the wheel. Um, you, you, you know you have all these different rideshare services, Uber, Lyft. <clears throat> it's, it's not that difficult. I come back to, and I'm waiting for someone at the Rhode Island State House to show some leadership. We, I want to know where was he coming from. We need to start to hold these people accountable for whether it is a bartender, a restaurant, whoever. Now, if he's drinking in his own home, I, you know, then he should face the penalty of that. But just two weeks ago, two weeks ago, you had on Post Road, that guy was annihilated from Johnston. And he cruised in and, and hit those two women. And you know, one of them, they, they're in critical condition. Everything is not a death, but their life totally up. It, it, it's so selfish. But notice, folks, our, our public officials do nothing to strengthen the roads. They do nothing to make things tougher. They do nothing to streamline the process against those as far as a DUI. Now, <clears throat> I also want to mention right now on this Wednesday, and I'm going to post this on our Facebook page. But there is a fundraiser coming up, Beer and Dynamite Fundraiser, happening September 22nd from 5 to 9. Entertainment, from what I understand, is by, I believe it's a group called 
fixed income. $20 tickets, Dynamites by Little General. And this is to help Ron McKenzie with continued treatment and recovery. He suffered from a brain injury brought on by cardiac arrest. Proceeds are benefiting his treatment at Apex Brain Center in North Carolina. Now, <clears throat> donations, raffle tickets, you can contact Sue McKenzie. I've been in touch with uh, one of his children, Alex. So I will post this, but it's a very worthwhile fundraiser that's been coming up. And so I did want to, we don't do a lot of them only because I am inundated with requests to do it. But I've chosen to do this and I'm going to highlight it more. <clears throat> but folks, I, I mean it. This, like nothing is done about it. This, that Dolan, the, the Pataka police have every right to cut that guy loose. And and all he's doing, like it, it's so selfish. And the same thing with, you know, I, I know Officer Lugo. And he was lucky and the police stood by him. And he gets back on the force with Providence. And I know Officer Lugo, and he is a nice guy and so forth. But how does he pay them back by falling asleep while he, like, you, you're just, you're giving the anti-police people, you're, you're giving them ammunition. And it hurts all police officers. It hurts all police officers when when that type of conduct uh, goes on. But I, I do want to mention, it is, make no mistake about it, as this election shows that Rhode Island is not totally a lost cause. The fact that Ruggenberg lost, that's big. It's big because are there progressives in the state? Of course they are. But they're not that far, right? The fact that the candidate that Bernie Sanders wanted, that AOC wanted, Aaron Ruggenberg, he is. He is entitled. He is an elitist. He's rude. Um, he, he is, he's a communist and he had every intention. Like they're so insulting. Am I, yes, I'm glad he lost. I'm glad he lost. I'm glad Matos lost. She is like, I, what? Now that Sandra Keno, the state senator of Pataka, who finished third, by the way, I think she's going to end up trying to get a job if Gabe Ammo pulls her off. But in, in CD1, um, it speaks volumes that, that that individual, there is a difference. There is a difference. I think this does draw a big contrast with Gary Leonard. The Rhode Island Republican Party, they, they need to really rally behind Gary Leonard and go all out. This is, remember, you know, no race is impossible. It's been a while. The last Republican that held that seat was Ron Makeley. Who, if you remember, he beat Saint Germain, and then he um, won re-election, and then he left the seat to run, and Congressman Makeley lost to Lincoln Allman in the Republican primary for governor. By the way, Makeley, Congressman Makeley, then went on and turned around Bryant University. I mean, he did a phenomenal job as the president of Bryan. I know him. I've interviewed him many times. He and his wife are always so, so gracious. But um, Gary Leonard, he's he's a stand-up guy. He's a former Marine. I, I'd like to see how the Rhode Island Republican Party is going to come out and rally behind him. Because I still believe the best talking point to get a Republican elected I believe it's still, we have no representation in Washington. You know, with, with uh, when it was fung against Seth Magaziner last November, Magaziner was still saying in order to hold on to the House, they needed, they needed, like, to win that election. Now, now we know the Republicans are in control. The Republicans are not giving up any time, so they're not losing control any time. So Gary Leonard has an opportunity to go to Washington and represent Rhode Island and with Speaker McCarthy. One of the problems, though, and for those of you that watch when we sometimes do one after dark at night, the problem in Rhode Island is our voting system. Uh, I hear that. I hear that from people that work, uh, are associated with, I should say, with some of the presidential campaigns. Speaker McCarthy's people found that out. They pumped a ton of money, millions into that race. 
and is until Rhode Island cleans up its house regarding this ballot harvesting that goes on. It's um it, that that's not democracy. It's not voting. All this early voting that goes on. It's it's ludicrous. That 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 Don Carlson who is still on the ballot even though he pulled out of the race, all those wasted votes for him. Something needs to be done. So I'm hoping that um, the Republican in this race for this Cicilline seat, I hope that Senate Minority Leader Jessica De La Cruz, I hope Representative uh, House Minority Leader Mike Chippendale, I, I hope they jump into action for him. And I hope they get involved in the campaign, and I hope they recognize the difficulty in the, there's no reason to have a system like this with all these mail ballots. Folks, this portion of the John DePietro Show is brought to you by AJ Drywall Plasters and Home Improvement, family-run business. You know, more and more people are realizing that even if you want to, let's just say you could get a lot of money for your home. There's low inventory right now for people looking to purchase a home. And on top of that, where are you going to go? So people are saying, I'm going to fix up my basement. AJ Drywall Plasters and Home Improvement. Frame to finish basements, acoustical ceilings. They could build you a new home if that's what you're looking for. Additions, commercial, rehabs, painting, remodeling. Go with a trusted local company, AJ Drywall Plasters and Home Improvement. Call them today, 401-323-9252, 401 401- 323-9252, AJ, Drywall Plasters and Home Improvement. Call them for a free quote. Maybe you say, you know, we're thinking of really utilizing our basement. Call them. Maybe you'd like to add on, uh, have a real home office. You're tired of just working from your kitchen table, dining room table. Maybe you want an in-law apartment. Painting, remodeling. AJ Drywall Plasters and Home Improvement. Call them today, 401 323 9252. Well, folks, good afternoon. You're listening to the John DePietro Show. It's AM 1380 and 99.9 FM. Now, uh, I anticipate we're going to do Facebook Live later, as especially over the next couple of days, as the temperatures continue to rise. That's when things kind of go off the trail a little bit. I, I really believe something needs to be done about this uh, continued drunk driving epidemic. And that, that dole in a Pawtucket, like, like, and I, I folks, what, what is also so egregious and cruel is every year they have the families that have lost family members to a drunk driver. They've lost children to a drunk driver. And they let them, they make them testify. And they pretend like they're listening. And the fact of the matter is they, they're, they're not doing anything to curb the drunk driving. As I have said in the past, and we'll have him on again, um, Mark Dennison is just, you know, it, it's so cruel what happened to their son. And, and I get that we're a tourism state. I, I get that. But we don't have to have... The lax, as I've talked about, I, I believe Rhode Island should implement more preventive. It's not about lock them away for 25 years. It's not about lock, give them light. It's, none of that brings the person back. We need more proactive approach. I'm not convinced it's going to happen with this governor, by the way. But we need more of... You know, you're on the road, you see a suspected drunk driver, contact him. You're the law enforcement. It doesn't take up your entire night trying to go through that. The uh, DUI attorneys, it's become a cottage industry where, you know, they we, we know their MO. They, they tell people, don't take the test, and then I can find a way to get it out. And, it, you know, they... they at the Rhode Island State House, the den of thieves behind me, they, they leave themselves loopholes that they know exists that then they can knock it out. And if there's one, there's so much paperwork, there's so much has to be done. If the police make one minor little din dot an eye, they, they exploit it. And then they, they work a way to get the whole thing knocked out. Uh, 
We saw it happen with Bacchus, right? Poopy pants. Uh, people have been asking me, by the way, was she on that commercial flight? I, I don't know. That's a good question. There was an emergency with the um, that flight that uh, that took off. Folks, this portion of the program also is brought to you by Rhode Island Rentals and Inflatables. Hey, if you're having a party, they have a great Facebook page. You can call them at 401-358-1213. That makes it a party. When you suddenly have, and they'll bring it to you, a bouncy house for the kids. Uh, I've told you what I like about it with Rhode Island rentals and inflatables is it certainly makes an area where all the children can be and you don't have to worry about them wandering off. Book your next event, Rhode Island rentals and inflatables. Call them 401-358-1213. Again, they have a great Facebook page and you can get in touch with them that way. Well, folks, good afternoon. You're listening to the John DePietro Show. It's AM 1380 and 909.9 FM. Now, coming up, uh, we're going to bring you the 1 o'clock news. And then next hour, uh, politi- uh, Excuse me, we'll speak with Dan McGowan of the Boston Globe. Listen, without question, the big news of the day is, in fact, CD1. And now it sets up this showdown. Republican Gary Leonard against Democrat Gabe Ammo, who's now advanced. And those two will now face off in the general election in November. I anticipate we'll do Facebook Live later. Right now, we're going to break for the 1 o'clock news. Another full hour to go. You can listen AM 1380, 99.9 FM, or listen online at the website to Petro.com. We're back on the other side after the 1 o'clock news.